Welcome to Speak Out. I'm Sandy Galef, a member of the New York State Assembly, representing parts of Northern Westchester and parts of Putnam County. And today we're going to be talking about a wonderful organization called Mothers Out Front. And uh, we're going to learn about this organization of wonderful community-involved people. And uh, to, to my left first is Eva Thaddeus, who's the local team coordinator for Mothers Out Front. And okay. Good, good to have you here. And you live in Croton. I do. So you're local. I am. And Lisa Marshall uh, is a community organizer, but she lives kind of far away in? Uh, Horseheads, New York, believe it or not. <laughs> but it's good to be back in Westchester right. County where I right. grew up. Right. Thank you did you grow up us. in Westchester? I did in New Rochelle. Uh -huh. Right. Right. Well, we're glad that you're back. And you've both gotten uh, to know each other through this very... Um, Somewhat new organization, I'd say. Eva, tell us a little bit about, you know, how Mothers Out Front, where, where did it start? Right, absolutely. So it started in Massachusetts, and I actually learned about it, I think, just when it was forming. I happened to be there um, at a... Uh, there was a march on a coal plant, and I was doing that five years ago. A and coal plant. A coal C -O -A -L. plant. A, a, right. right, a coal plant. Right. Um, and uh, on the shore in Massachusetts, and there was a speaker there from Mothers Out Front speaking about how uh, a couple of mothers at that point were starting a new organization to particularly uh, speak to women and to, to mothers and their concern about the future and their kids. And uh, I had already uh, been busy with environmental actions for some time, but I was also a fairly new mother at that point myself, and I thought, this is brilliant. This is, this is brilliant to specifically speak to mothers because what the climate movement needs more than anything is more people. We need we need a big, big tent, and we need um, we need as the level of concern that this issue merits and needs, the urgency has to build. And so, uh, mothers are everywhere, and mothers mm -hmm. have every reason in the world to be concerned about that future on behalf of their kids. So, mm -hmm. and they're not always involved because they're very busy with their kids. But mm -hmm. if you are specifically speaking to mothers and acknowledging the particular challenges that mothers have with how to manage their time and the particular ways that they're that they're busy and available then that's a real opportunity to get people involved that maybe weren't involved before mm -hmm. and to grow the movement so I, I kept that in the back of my mind that was five years ago and I, I got on their email list right there. I think I saw, you know, I put my name on something. So I got periodic emails from Mothers Out Front. And then I, um, I moved to Croton a few years ago. And shortly then after, after I moved, so three years ago, two years, about two years ago, I, I saw a notice somehow that there was going to be a Mothers Out Front uh, house party, and oh, so my uh, goodness, I know. You're, I, you're, you just perked it just up like that. Just, right? I just perked up like that. It just <laughs> happened to happen to to take place, and so there was one, and a lot of people came, and then it was kind of a, just a one-time event, and mm -hmm. nothing came of it, which is off, so often the case when things organized the first time, nothing mm -hmm. came of it, and then is that a, a kind of Westchester organization? Or it was Croton. Just Croton. I think everybody that came was from Croton, mm -hmm. and the way that a house party works is that people invite people they know, and then other people. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anybody because I was new in town, but I, I mm -hmm. came, and I think I met, I think you may have been there, Lisa. I was or, there. Yeah, mm -hmm. I met you. I think you maybe you gave me my first t-shirt right then, in fact. I might have. So that was my first, that was I was getting mm -hmm. to know mm -hmm. people in Croton at that point, and then nothing happened for about a year, and then I, I heard from one of the people who had organized that meeting that she was troubled because she was, t her husband was ill, and she needed to um, step back and needed somebody to take on this organization, and I thought, well, this is a really worthy organization that needs to happen in our town, mm -hmm. so then, then I, ste I stepped in, and that was about a, a year, a, a little bit over a year ago, to have a house party. 
and to to follow through to coordinate it in Croton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yeah. And Lisa, how did you get involved in all this? Were you in Massachusetts five years ago? Or? I was not in Massachusetts five years uh -huh. ago. I got involved. Um, well, when first of all, Mothers Out Front. Eva mentioned is founded by a couple of mothers and you'll find it interesting Sandy to hear about this because um, Kelsey Worth who who was the original founder along with Vanessa Rule um, she's from a political family her dad was a United States senator mm -hmm. and she uh, when she had her own children all of a sudden realized the urgency of the climate issue and that neither political party was taking the action that was needed and the only way she knew how to make change in the world was politics. And she knew from growing up in, as the daughter of a senator that right. she didn't want, want to have, a, have anything to do with politics. So when she heard about um, the organizing principles that have been codified by Marshall Gans at the Kennedy School in, at Harvard, and I don't know if you know, but Marshall Gans was one of the sort of key um, organizers for the Obama for America campaign or his principles were used for that campaign. And she mm -hmm. thought, well, this is really effective, and what if I use these principles to reach out to other mothers? Because I bet I'm not the only one who's mm -hmm. worried about mm -hmm. this issue. So that was five years ago. Um, my sister's college roommate, they were at Barnard together, lives in Boston, and got involved with Mothers Out Front. And when Mothers Out Front was starting in New York, Claire told me, she said, Lisa, I know you really care about the climate issue. I'm involved with Mothers Out Front, and you should get involved too. So I thought, mm -hmm. oh, okay, well maybe. Mm -hmm. And uh, just like Eva, I got invited to a house party and I went and met some other moms in my community and we sat and told our stories and um, I have three children of my own. Uh, we live in the middle of um, the gas lands. I know we don't have fracking in New York, but we have a lot of gas support and fracking support and gas infrastructure and other things and I didn't know what to do about it and this was mm -hmm. the first time meeting these other mothers that I felt this I felt there was something that it could be done mm -hmm. and and understood that that was um, what needed to be done I got really excited about doing some more so that's how I got involved right that's great so how many I, I learned about it from Eva came to my office I w wasn't there because I was legislating someplace, mm -hmm. probably in Albany, and uh, I know you spoke to my staff, so um, obviously you all are reaching out to mm -hmm. elected officials to mm -hmm. tell everybody about this whole new new group of people, relatively new group of people that are coming forward on this issue. We are, and it's our, it's our mission to make an impact on decision makers by building our building our numbers and networking at the grassroots level mm -hmm. and making mm -hmm. change locally and then uh, with the support of uh, people like Lisa across the state to, to connect with the different local groups. So we have groups in, in Rochester and Long Island and the Southern Tier and the Adirondacks as well as now in Westchester County. And we're all working locally in our communities at the level of our, our village councils at the mm -hmm, county mm -hmm. and the state. So we absolutely are trying to introduce ourselves at all our local and state levels of government at this point. So we mm -hmm. we uh, knew that you were on recess and we made an appointment um, so that we could introduce ourselves to you and lobby for a particular bill that was uh, um, in the legislature at, or, or it was being proposed, which was for 100% renewable energy. So it was a step up from from what has already um, what has already become law, and and what is what everybody thinks is is already ambitious mm -hmm. at the state level. Um, the reality is that we need to do more, and so we're really working to we're uh, we're working to let everybody know at every level. Um, the importance of doing everything that we can for the future of our kids. Right. So a clean environment. A, a absolutely. Good environment, a clean a environment, environment, a healthy environment, and renewable energy. So, a, so a, mm -hmm. a, a complete 
transition to renewable energy. And that, that's a that's a big word to even you know get your head well, around. Well, it's a very but, large you know, goal. I know is. there's a bill that I actually signed on to after you we came to talk with my staff. Right. Um, but it's about trying to get 100% um, renewable by 2030, right? Yes, it is. Yes. 100% by 2030. Right. So that's, you know, that, that's, that's a lot because right now what we have, that's, that's the, the current uh, goal but from New York State is 50% by 2030. Mm -hmm. So this would, this would up it. Mm -hmm. But the, you know, the reason that we're being ambitious like that is that we are paying close attention to what the scientists are saying and we know that the urgency is intense. And I think that's what not, not everybody realizes or is really taking stock of. I think that um, you know, I read polls and I, so I know that most, most Americans do understand that the climate is changing and most people realize that it's human beings that are doing it. Mm -hmm. And and most people believe that we need to do something about it. So all of those things, actually, a majority of Americans know. But what not everybody can really, I think, take stock of is that it has to be done really right. soon. It has or, to be done soon. Or how to go about doing it as an individual. And um, Lisa, you're working statewide, but also in your community. Um, I mean, I think. The polls do say that, you yeah. know, that we need to do something, but it's, yeah. it's, sometimes it's hard for your neighbors on every side of you to, to get an understanding of what exactly can they do exactly. um, yeah. and how do they influence legislators and practically. Do you have some advice for people sitting back in their homes and saying, I know we need to do something, what do we do? As a matter of fact, I do. Okay, good. <laughs> okay, good. Um, you know, a lot there's uh, there's a lot of things, and people are worried because they think, oh well, I don't know where to start, and maybe mm -hmm. people will judge me for the kind of car that I'm driving, or that I don't have solar panels yet. And those are all these individual decisions that people can make, whether they hang their clothing on the line or dry it in the dryer, right, mm -hmm. or whether they bring their grocery bags to the store with them, or they take the plastic ones. But the reality is, and the reason we're talking to you is that these are big systems that none of us put into place. We were all born into this world that's based on fossil fuel combustion and mm -hmm. extraction, mm -hmm. all of us. Mm -hmm. And um, it's not something that an individual can change. And it's something that needs big change. And that has to um, be a systemic change in the way we do business in this world, the way we transport ourselves, the way we heat our buildings, the way we manufacture electricity. So the reason why Mothers Out Front, our theory of change is to build the power of mothers to influence decision makers. Decision makers like you are the ones that can actually make the changes that we need. Mm -hmm. And what I'm really excited about is working here in New York because as you well know, New York moms have a history throughout the ages of mm -hmm. affecting big change, mm -hmm. through, um, mm -hmm. yep. whether it was women's suffrage mm -hmm. or the Underground Railroad. Right, and we're just celebrating that women's suffrage. That's this right. Year. right. That's right. Yes. Or or abolition. Years. You know, um, I'm a I'm a real student of history. I love Abraham Lincoln. I was born on Lincoln's birthday, and I just read one of the many biographies. And it, you know, they in the biography. The women at home, the wives and mothers, were writing to the decision makers in Washington about slavery saying, you have to fix this. This is, mm -hmm. God is watching you. <laughs> and that was such a big moment because in order to undo that, you had to undo an entire economic system built on slavery. And we have an entire econ economic system built on fossil fuels. It's, a, it's not like you can pass one law and change the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of work to do and um, building the only way to overcome the, the tremendous power of the fossil fuel companies is to build more people power on our side, and that's what Mothers Out Front is doing. Mm -hmm. And we're mm -hmm. building out, you know, environmentalism, climate act action can't be a niche thing. It can't be something that just students do or just a few, you know, upstate white frack act fracking activists. You know, it has to be a broad and deep movement that um, that that understands the intersectionality between in income inequality and poverty mm -hmm. and um, health issues related to fossil fuels and all of these things because for decades the fossil fuel industry has gotten away with um, you know 
all of the the external externalities as they're called the costs that we all pay as a society of living in this fossil fuel world we pay for but they get the profits so mm -hmm. we have to upend that system and I think right. to, to speak to Sandy your question about how people feel that they don't know how to make a difference or what to do it's been increasingly I, I think the more email lists I get on, right? The more petitions mm -hmm. I get, and the more and more urgent in tone they get, and that, and so I just I sift through all of this email, either signing petitions or not signing petitions, deciding mm -hmm. whether I do, and then there's always a request for money that mm -hmm. follows that up, you know. And I think I and a lot of other people feel both kind of overwhelmed and maybe somewhat cynical about how whether that kind of action is making a difference and so for me it's been kind of a revelation to live in a, a living in a village and realizing that the local levels of government are are really responsive to they citizens you, you can know go right to exactly. your local board meeting yep. and and participate right. and say what needs to be done and make right. a difference. That's an, yeah. that's a good level to yeah, be exactly. involved with. Yeah, exactly. Right. And yeah. yeah. And that so that so yeah, that's where mm -hmm. you can make the difference and then you work together and then you build up mm -hmm. to these upper mm -hmm. levels instead of just just getting your name on all of these things that go to, you know, who knows whose desk right. or not even. Right. And so it's really a very different model of politics um, from what I think a lot of people are used to certainly from what you would understand from watching the news and we just we see scandal after scandal and we just it's it's this kind of overwhelming thing instead of realizing that right right in your community you can take very particular actions so um, for example I just I'm looking at this right here can you I tell you, you what we did some, recently yes you have some yeah. pictures here. yes I do absolutely so <laughs> this is something that we did for um, Earth Day and Mother's Day we made a connection because those, those things fall mm -hmm. close together in the calendar between Earth Day and Mother's Day. So we in the Croton group had a table at Croton Earth Day, and we had sort of a, a fun part of it, which was a dress exchange. This was, this was Megan's idea, one of our other team members, was a great a idea. A dress exchange. A dress exchange. It was bring a dress, take a dress, right? So that okay. was like. It wasn't the, a prom thing. It, it was not was a prom <laughs> thing. This was just right. like get people in, you know, bring uh -huh. a dress, take a dress, you know. So, uh -huh. so uh, people like that, and then bring your kids over and have them draw uh, what the earth should be mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. what they what problems with the earth they would like to fix. And so we, we did those things, and at the same time, we got people's signatures on a petition to our village board of trustees. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, accompanies this Mother's Day card. So the Mother's Day card we composed, and it says, all we want for Mother's Day is. And so you have good flowers on we have there. Good flowers, <laughs> and then it says, to save the planet for our children. And then there's the language of the petition over here where we're asking our local Board of Trustees to make a resolution similar to what we lobbied you to mm -hmm. do, which was to uh, do everything in the power of the municipality to reduce carbon emissions 100% by 2030. So we really are asking everybody at, at every level for this big thing. Mm -hmm. And I wanted just to hold up some of these pictures that the kids did because this is, you know, this is where it comes from can for I, us. Can I just say one thing about that? Would you please? Well, the as Sandy referred to earlier, the exciting thing that we're doing is so it's, we're not just having people sign a petition. We're really turning mm -hmm. out moms to these meetings. So mm -hmm. you're going to be is next it moms week, right? And moms or, and children. Or not next week. <laughs> is it all moms and or is it moms and children it's, sometimes? It's so it's mom. It's we call it mothers and others. And it's moms uh -huh. and children. Sometimes <laughs> it's dads. Sometimes right. okay. it's supporters. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we have women right. who aren't mothers. Yes. Actually, women who have chosen right. not to become mothers because of the right. climate issue who are involved mm -hmm. with us. Wow. We we have a broad coalition, but we're we're speaking with the, the voice of mothers mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. to protect their children. Right. So anyway, the oh, yes. So the delivery part is to to come to the village board meeting and to present this card to each mm -hmm. trustee mm -hmm. along with the the list of 81 signatures that we got from Croton residents. Mm -hmm. And are we, it's a village of 8,000 people. So you know we have to to make a presence like that at a village meeting is really significant. Absolutely. You know, yeah, Absolutely. yeah, yeah. People don't don't understand you don't have to have 
so many to have a presence right. at something. Right. I mean, it's still significant, but it's not like you have to have everybody in the community sign something. It starts the dialogue uh, when you present that to a village board or when people send me something. It, it, it inspires us. When I get an right. email and then I get, you know, two more and ten more, I say, ooh, there's something going on out there. Yep. And, you know, it triggers you to really delve into the issue. So people don't realize how important they are to this whole process. Well, exactly. And once you make that introduction and get to know those decision makers and mm -hmm. um, they decide that they like this group Mothers Out Front and they want to work with them, um, we have had such good good results doing that and up in uh, Dryden outside of Ithaca where we we have the we, we we got the town board to do something for us and they've been working with us on an ongoing basis for almost a year now and we brought a thank you note to the to the town supervisor and he said I've never gotten a thank you yes. note before I only hear people's complaints <laughs> that is such a key to thank people when they've done something that you like so or they've listened to you or whatever you know, else even four or five don't. friendly moms coming out to a town meeting where all uh -huh. they usually hear is have, why haven't you fixed the road in front of right. my house right. <laughs> right. or Picked the, the garbage or whatever yes else, it's right. amazing what can what can transpire with just a few uh -huh. um, a few dedicated mothers uh, speaking the truth to to their decision makers mm -hmm. and really dialoguing because it, it oftentimes um, they might want to do something and they need the political support right you know right and so it, it can be sometimes that the idea comes from us of what mm -hmm, you could mm -hmm. do for us but sometimes mm -hmm. Um, mothers have walked in to introduce themselves and decision makers have said, wow, where have you been? I've been looking for people <laughs> like you, <laughs> which is really gratifying. Yes, That's great. that is wonderful. Yeah. And one, of the, one of the things that I like very much about working in this organization is it is female-led at every level. And we don't, it's not that we don't welcome everybody, but that the, the organizers and the leadership mm -hmm. are, are female. And that I think leads to a different kind of balance of voices, and mm -hmm. you know, not that not that women are the only people who might think to write a thank you letter, no. but you know, it's no. but you know, but we there's do have a certain we style. do have a certain style, that's right. you know, right. That's right, and that's nice, and that's right. good, and, and it needs to be, and it needs to be part of our civic society more and more strongly, and and it, it is part of a citizen wave that. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. seeing in my own village and hearing about in the media as well that women at every level, especially local levels, are getting involved. They're running for office, and mm -hmm. they're taking action. So that's it's exciting to be part right. part of yeah, that. Yeah, it's great. Yep. Now you have some yes, pictures absolutely. here for children. I do, and I used right. to be an elementary school teacher, as I know you you did <laughs> as well. Right. So these are all dear to my heart. So these are some of the kids who came to our table at Earth Day, and they were making their pictures of the Earth. So this says. Um, the earth, what it should be, this is what it, sh what it should be, and there's what it is. Oh, oh that's I a little know. discouraging, It's a little it? discouraging, <laughs> and then it says, you need to help save our earth. I know, I right. know, this is. So this is, I mean, this is, right. This is the, 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 the heartbreak that is behind our, our work and the reason that we need to keep building hope and among mm -hmm. all of ourselves is that we, we've done this to our children, ourselves, and our parents' generation and the ones mm -hmm. before that. We're responsible for that. Do you think they teach, teach much in the for schools about, you know, these issues or is it just we have so much to teach that we're not talking about um, the climate and the, the changes and whatever? Actually, Eva has a really good story about that, one of I her do. team members. I do have a really good you story. You should hold up that picture. It's so beautiful. This next one, I will. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, I, do, I do think that in Croton that, that that does take place, but I think that from state to state, it is it very, different. very different indeed. And yes, let me, um, let me tell that story before I show more pictures because well, you it's hold it up really intense. You can tell the story. He can look at, he can, anyway. <laughs> I think if you hold it up, then we'll give them a there's, chance there's to a see it on the camera. This is a tree, child. and this says, this is, yeah, this is so beautiful. This says, um, keeping, the earth. keeping the earth clean keeps us all free. Yeah. So this is like our vision of hope That's to me. It's an international 
message. It, it absolutely is. is. It is. Right. It's it the keeps message us about all free. Right. Right. About you know, sort of justice to compromise you know. our souls. That's right. Yep. And then this one. This one is. Just to, to show sort of a different style, this this boy, this boy did uh, renewable energy. He goes three renewable energies is more sort of didactic. <laughs> it's like a little less. <laughs> and it goes hydroelectric, hydroelectric, wind, and then this tiny little parentheses here. It says, make sure it's away from bats. The wind, <laughs> solar. Right, make right. sure the wind is away from bats <laughs> and solar. Right, yes. Right. So so he definitely has been educated by someone. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Let me talk to you about the wind because I think one of the bills that we have in Albany that you came in to talk about is one that um, one of the bills said that there shouldn't be windmills near Fort Drum, upstate New right, York. Right. And I know you were opposing that, um, as I am too. It mm -hmm. doesn't seem mm -hmm. like we should be saying no to windmills. We don't want to, we don't want to put windmills in a place that uh, would be compromising something, but, but why not? I mean, so why are you, I mean, you're, that, that's one of you, you look at the bills that we have in Albany and you make decisions on which ones you want to support and not. Um. Right. Well, that particular instance was, was because it didn't seem like a necessary hurdle to impose upon mm -hmm. the wind industry. And for all the renewable energies, wind and solar and mm -hmm. geothermal, um, the the industries are just really getting getting their wings, and they are getting their wings in a wonderful way. But um, policies like that that could uh, hamper them unnecessarily aren't helpful. And that particular bill, you can speak to the details of it. But our, yeah. our allies that that uh, upstate that knew more about it said that it wasn't it wouldn't be necessary because the the Department of Defense would be able to. Um, to stop if there was a if there was a wind farm that was going to be mm -hmm. dangerous because it was close to a, right. a military right. installation, it actually wouldn't be a problem to stop it. I, I just touched the microphone. I my husband's actually a retired Navy pilot, oh. so <laughs> um, I do know a little bit about this. The Department of Defense has uh, the ability to have a lot of input into any any renewable energy mm -hmm. siting, mm -hmm. and that New York State has a really rigorous process for siting renewable energy projects. That's Article Ten. Um, so, bills like this are a little bit sneaky because really they seem, they sound good and, you know, I've an experienced legislator. Protecting the military. That's right. It sounds else. really great, right? And, but really it's a sort of a Trojan horse mm -hmm. and really mm -hmm. trying to get in the way of the wind industry. And um, I don't know if you know what percentage of our electricity is generated by wind and solar right now, do you? I don't know, but I, the last time it was like 3% or yeah, something. So that, it, it's pretty low. Yeah, it's pretty it's, low. It's probably, it's between right. 3 and 4%. So mm -hmm. obviously that's nowhere near where we want to be. And we do have tremendous potential for wind energy from upstate um, and offshore. Right. The offshore wind is starting to get underway finally, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. really exciting. But it's going to take a while to build that, and um, well, it's going to take organizations. We're, we're in conclusion, but it is taking organizations such as yours to promote all these alternative energies. So I really want to thank Lisa and Eva very much for all your good work. And if people want to learn more about Mothers Out Front, I think we put a website there that they can respond to and become involved. So I just want to thank both of you for being here and keep up the good work. Thank you so much. Thank and for, for the audience again, if you have any questions, you can always call me at my office on 914-941-1111. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good evening. And let's keep our, our climate uh, healthy and safe for us and our children in the future. Thank you very much.